Okay, it's been about an hour and a half uh, doing supporting the customer didn't want to do. He knows he wanted it. So on the M8 heads, this is what you do. These heads were not blasted, so everyone is clean has been cut. The stuff is dirty was not. So you can see where I cut and didn't didn't cut. So they had the ports pretty constipated through here. So my finger fits in there pretty nicely now. Here's your stock port over here. You can see that's a little smaller in here. So I kind of blended all this stuff in here. You can see they're a really cobby, roughy port. Now obviously the seats are out of this, so it's a little different looking, but this whole area got all opened up. The intake ports aren't too bad, but they do have a lot of sharp edges right here where they machine them. And they leave them high, right here. So I don't know if you can see it, but you can definitely feel when you put your fingers in there. So you just knock off these high spots where you blend in at, and that's about it. You can see the machine marks there where the ends. Well, with the ends, it's got a taper going like this. So you got to cut that out, blend it in. That's the kind of stuff you get rid of. They're also unshrouded around here. You can see how tight it is right around here. This is stock bore motor, so whatever the, that's four inch bore, I guess, or four and a sixteenth. I'm not sure what these things have. So anyway, you can see how they're tight on that. And we just come in here and just knock off the area right through there, blend it out. Unshroud it just a little bit. So that way when the valve opens, you got a little bit of area here to flow around it. It gets pretty shrouded. The bigger the bore is, the more you can unshroud this thing. The more you can unshroud this, the better it's going to run. You can see how big the exhaust is over here. If the intake was like this, it would be nice. See how much clearance it's got. Put jam in down there like that. That should not have jam in there like that. That's not right. Hmm. Yeah, something ain't right. I'm going to check into that next. Anyway, you can see how it's unshrouded, pretty good in exhaust. It'd be nice if the intake was that much. I think these things are sitting down here in the carbon. <clears throat> that's the new guys that were in this one. Yeah. So, anyway, that's the difference there. So you can see how you just cut that area out and just blend it. You can see I'm not doing much. A little bit on the short side here, not too bad. Damn it, find a spot to lay. You just want to blend it here, make a nice long radius. Don't We'll get too carried away. You cut straight in here and then you blend whatever's left on the edge. No extra. Over here you do the same thing. You just kind of blend this all in so it's nice and smooth. Lightly blend over here. You can see what all the blocks are right up into that area where I did not cut. These ports are humongous. You don't need to open the ports up any. You just need to get rid of the shrouded areas which are right under the valve seats. For some reason they wanted to do that. I don't know why. I'm not into doing show uh, polishing or porting or grinding the whole surface so it makes it look like I could spend a lot of money for some stupid reason. I only cut where it needs to be cut. You got a big bowl over here, I don't need to cut that. Over here it wasn't, I cut it. I don't, I'm not into fancy ass show crap. You run your finger through here, it's got a nice blended radius in there, it's nice and smooth. That's all you need. You don't need any more exhaust, same thing. I did a little more work in the exhaust because they were really, really constipated. They're still pretty small. I didn't cut the seats out. I just cleaned them out. The aluminum under it. So it was really, really constipated. You can see I put a trough right through there. I added a whole trough through there. It was not there. I added it. That unshrouded it. You can see over here you had room to flow. Over here, no room to flow. Oh, wrong port. This one had a lot of room to flow. This one here did not. Same thing on the other side. We got constipated on this wall right here. I had to cut the wall out a little bit. Make it so it's a nice bowl comes straight up. A nice even bowl, not have a like a sludge in it. Cut it well. Do a little blending on the short side, but stay off the damn thing. Don't get too much. We opened it up to what the seat was, because it had a big lip in there. Took it out. So anyway, that's how you do it. You don't have to get too fancy. Didn't do anything from this side. You can see how you can see where I cut. The only where the not black is where I cut. Still, that took about an hour and a half just to get it all cleaned up and nice. And anyway, that's how you do it. So it's just, uh, you, know, you guys can do it yourself. Ain't no big deal. Just knock off the spot that's in the way. See, same thing. I added a trough through this side, too. For some reason, I want no airflow going through there. I don't know why. 
Charlie's got all kinds of stupid ideas, so here's another one on that side. Same, same thing, same head, same trough, see? Just a mirror image. Whatever you do on this side, guess what? You get to do it on this side, but the opposite side. So the outside is the same as this outside, the inside is the same as this inside. So, oh well. Alright, so that's how you do it. Not too much effort involved in that. Alright, uh, let's see, I got all the valves all cleaned up. I'm going to get all my valve springs we're going to use and get ready for some assembly. I'm going to check to see why that valve is tied. I think it's just on the carbon, but I'm going to double check that. We'll be back. Okay, I'm going to the spring kit out. Uh, the valve situation, well, yeah, the one valve's got carbon on it, so I just flip it around the other way and it looks fine. So no more binding. So you put this one over here, it binds, so it's just a matter that the carbon gets in the way of the top of the guy because this guy's a little bit different height between the two. See how there's a lot of carbon on that one way in there? It's causing problems. Right. One way of getting it out. So the carbon's way deep in here, so that's what's catching on top of the valve. So as long as I put them in on this correct way, we're fine. So I'm going to lay that like that, so remember, hopefully. Yeah, whatever. Okay, i got to check this rocker and see what's going on with the boss over here. Okay, that one's out. So this is the one that had the... It pulled right here. You had this damage here. How's the thread in here? The thread looks kind of hokey. I'm not sure. It's a little torn up, but probably okay. So, does it fit in here or not? This is how these things go, I'm not sure. It's a little bit tight here at some spot. Since possession, we have no employee up here, we do. So. I'm not sure what we're hitting on, but something is obviously. I missed in here somewhere. Alright, so I'm just going to hit a file on the side here. I can feel a bit burrs on that. And the damage. So we're just going to lightly knock that down a little bit. So we use my nice dull file. I'm just going to hit it on both surfaces here. You can hear it. See a lot of a lot of high spots there. Didn't need that, did I? smoother and the bench off okay so we knocked off the burrs so I clean the burrs off here wasn't much on that side this one here had a lot of burring on that not a little bit on this but not too bad right here this one here you can see it's a lot of a lot of high spots where it was cutting on it so I cut that away so hopefully now Oh yeah, I got a clearance in the back. At least until you get right to this point. Okay, that's where it comes down and hits right there. So it gets into this edge right here. So in the high lift cam, I can see you're going to get close to that area. Probably not going to get that far on the valve's height. Probably about there's your limit. So you're really safe. 
Okay, so that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put a tap in here to clean this hole up. Make sure there's nothing stupid going on with that. So I need a clean area to work. Get ourselves a clean area right here. I already cleaned this head up, so I don't want to make it nice and dirty. Have to re-clean it again. It takes about five minutes to blow all the fins and holes out of this damn head. It's enough of them. So I'm go over here. All right. These are American threads, so it's five sixteenths coarse. So we just get ourselves a 5 16 coarse tap. And we'll clean the hole up here and see if, uh, how bad it is. Definitely not going down easy. It's a cutting a little bit, which is not a good thing. Cut a lot of metal. Just laying right on top of there. Gob guide right there. A lot of torn up material in there came out. That's probably why the threads didn't look all that good to begin with. So anyway, they're they are what they are. So we'll put a bolt in there and see how it feels. Nice new bolt here. Rattle, rattle to it. We've got a lot of rattle to it too, so it's probably a recurring problem. This one's definitely looser though. Airline. Right, it's not too bad once you get all the way in there, so I think it'll be okay. Much worse. I've heated a little. I think we're okay. All right, so we'll uh, we'll call that one as being good enough. Not perfect by a long sh long shot, but good enough. I think it'll work. So that's why I'm not gonna deal with it. <clears throat> All right. Well, now get back to assembly work. Okay, so we can go ahead and put these together now. Should be pretty straightforward. Get the kibble white springs out. <clears throat> Should be at least four of them, right? I think there's extras in here. Appear to have one extra. I'm guessing the uh, silver one is not the right one. Oh yeah, it has a different coil pack to it. That would be a stock spring that he mixed up in there. He's trying to confuse me. See, yeah, I got smarter than he was. Okay, so we got eight springs. That's a good sign. These are the four newer valve seals we're going to use. Oh, 
a whole set of new valve seals. We'll save those for the other set of heads. Okay, this bag is empty, whatever was in that. Some lower collars. Called spring seats. The reason they call it spring seat is because the seat for the spring where it goes on. I guess we're supposed to use these. I don't know. See, stock that's the spring seat. Looks like it's made to fit in there. Keeps the spring from moving too bad. See, if you put the spring in like this, you ought to rattle back and forth. That's bad. Spring needs to be held pretty closely where it needs to be, or it doesn't get, it gets unhappy. See how tight that is? So that takes up the gap. That's why they give you a lower spring seat. It's called a shouldered spring seat. So it doesn't want to push in there though. There it goes. Here's a pop. Now it's installed. So we put that on there now and we don't have as much movement, see? Just a little bit. Okay, so those are going to go in there, obviously. Here's our instructions. Ooh, look at all them fancy instructions there. Boy, ooh, they got some other good numbers here. Coil bind. Okay, we already know what coil bind we need from before. The stock springs are 950. Cam's 404, 504 lift is what the cam is. Andrews. Mysteriously, that's the name of it too. It's the second biggest cam that they offer, so should be right in line for what we want. He said it made a big difference for the few minutes it did run before he blew it up. about 56 degrees more duration in stock so it shouldn't be a huge huge difference in power and the belt boosts quicker because it's got more mid-range to it got wider lobe centers which will build up cylinder pressure so I picked out the cam for them the s, &S cams were uh, very narrow valve lobe centers not good for turbo bike There it goes. Okay, there's that. Should be some upper collars in there somewhere. I'm assuming that's these. Yeah, it appears to be an upper collar. Straggler there. Appears to be eight of them. That's a good sign. Yeah, almost no clearance, but it's tight. It's not tight, but there's it's only got about five thou clearance or so, maybe ten on the outside. Okay, so we can go measure this and then measure our coil bind. Let's see what we got. We need uh, we need to be down there about eight. Our 970 uh, or so is our low spot, I think. 960. So we'll grab our 6 inch scale here. We'll grab two springs to get kind of an idea where we're at. Let's go see what we got. Got this fancy dancy spring checking machine over here. I think it's American made and everything. Everybody should have one. It's called a vice. They work pretty good for this application. It's got smooth, smooth jaws on it.
Just go down until you hit. Don't force it. We are down there at about 8.35 or so. Let's see how good my retarded eyeballs are getting. We'll grab a caliper over here. Uh, right here. Let's see how bad my eyeballs are getting to be. It's at an angle though. This isn't getting all the way on the sharp edge. I mean about 826 on this one, but it's it's in the radius of the spring. So my eyeballs are pretty close, within 10 thou probably. See, I'm measuring on the radius right here instead of on the sharp edge. Sharp edge is right here. There's two sharp edges. You can measure from that now. Correct location of spring makes a big difference for measuring. Problems at an angle, so it's about in there somewhere. So at the angle, we get 856 straight. Not much difference. So now we're about 850, I would guess. So this side is spring up 10 high, the other one's 10 low. So oh well. I guess my eyeballs average out the ears. So I was measuring the radius, so that's what you get. Okay, so we're gonna call that one 8 850 as being close. We'll check this one and see what it comes at. at. So the flat edge is always next to the end of the spring. Right there, I can measure both flat spots between this one and this one. You a noisy rat out there? This one came out 67, so it's a little bit taller. We're going to call it 860. So I'm at 860 now for my coil bind height. So now I'm gonna go over here and figure out our install heights. I need to do a flash home. Is that possible? No, right now I'm working on heads. No, not I mean in order to put these in. Yeah, yeah. Go in the hone over there. Hmm? Put them in the hone over there. Bring me more work to work on. What's up with you? Jeez, I'm trying to do real work over here. I'm trying to work on a big ass twin cam looking piles of crap. Look on M8s over here. We've moved up in world. <laughs> Nothing but M8s like everybody else now. Alright, these cold uh, springs are a little bit taller than yours. Install height 405. You know what that's going to give you for a uh, valve lift? Not much. Was that 845 or that 945? I already forgot. See, now I go well, that's what we wanted to get rid of anyway. Was some of the now I go lift. measure this again. Here, you work the camera. Keep something forward. Ah! Ah! Jeez. Ah! That hurt. Who looked that damn thing out in the one like that? That hurt. Boom! Look, good for yellow. I can feel the blood rushing to it now. That's hmm. a good sign, right? As long as the bloods are turning. Ah. 
when it's restricted. That's Pain's when we starting to come in though. Pain's coming back. It's a good sign, right? Oh, so they're taller at closed. Ah, oh, that hurt. I think I said 8.45, not 9.45. I hope so. Yeah, we're at 8. This one's 8.60 at an angle. So we got 8.50, 8.60, and 8.55. Out of the three I checked. Okay, we're uh, 8.55. What's a half inch on top of that? You lost already? No, just on the phone. Oh, yeah, that hurt. Injured. Boy. All right. Too tired to think. People can't do. Follow me on math. Damn, it's sore. Okay, we got 0.860 is the bad spring. Plus 0.05. Plus what was your lift? I don't know. You know. You don't know. 855? 0.860 plus 0.05 plus 504. Oh, the um, install height is 1.414. So they say between 405 and 415. We better be in a higher number. Otherwise, you're going to have a little clearance issues. But we're still safe because they gave you 50 thousand coil bond clearance. But it'll still work even if it's a low number. Okay, so now I gotta measure your install height. Where's your worst valve? They're all bad. <laughs> <laughs> Equally. Now this valve has to go in here because it sticks, this one sticks in this hole. Because it has carbon buildup on it. And it has a new guide. See how they work really nice when this combination. Flip around the other way it sticks. Alright, so now you can go over here. Figure out what your install height is. Put this thing all together. We're gonna need. So we gotta figure out what this install height is over in here. So we pretty much have to just put it together, I'm guessing. I'm gonna leave that out because that's only about 30. tools for checking this stuff yet, so. so. Here's our carbon, more color. This is 33, I was off by three. It didn't look like 30. That was dang close. I was guesstimate. I'm go like this, measuring ball. 85. Eliminate that. That makes it easier to measure. Give me a little light duty springs up there. One light duty spring. <laughs> yeah, I got four. That's close enough. I assume we're going to use the old ones. Uh, keeper? Yeah. Yeah. They're already broken in, right? Yeah. Good. <laughs> what are you filming? You? Good. Appears to be a problem here. Do those keepers don't work for the... Well, if you put the keeper in there correctly, it might work. <laughs> If you put the collar the correct direction, it might work. But if you don't do any of those correctly, it doesn't work. Let's see. I did have the collar correct. So that means I had to keep her wrong. My fingers are too old and fat to do these small miniature vehicles. There you go. It worked correctly that time. Do you have a, uh, you don't have a drill hone? A drill hone. 
One of the little makeshift. Why would I have a drill hone for? For flash hone. Because this cylinder, I mean, this judge isn't bad at all. I have a real hone to hone with. I don't use dime store stuff. Okay, we're around 550-ish. Maybe 560. We have what, 85? You already forgot, didn't you? See, so, yeah. that's the number we need to remember. Mm -hmm. So if you add in 85, what do you get? 1.550 ish minus 0 0.085, because that's the height of your collar. We have 465, so we got golden on that valve. So we needed what, how much number they wanted? 405, 415, we're 50,000 up from that. According to that, you need to get uh, need some shimming in here to get maximum max stuff out of it. You don't have any good way of measuring them either. It's nothing to go off with that matters. 480. I think I'm going to go to an intake valve. I like this one. What about you? It works. We don't know if it works yet. <laughs> So I'm thinking we're going to need some shimming. I'm not sure how we're going to measure the install height on these things either. I don't have any way of measuring these things. But again, I think we have room to... I, I don't think it was a lit, a lit issue that I was having. We're having a valve float issue, so we want to maximize our spring yeah. tension. So we need to get some shims on the exhaust side to bring them up a little bit. So we need to have a shim that fits inside this hole right here. So it's this size here. So open that drawer up behind you there. You have to squeeze the button. Yeah. Where are you going to put that big ass thing? Well, geez. This is for a real bike. A bunch of these. They're not right for them either. They're custom. They were cheap, so I bought them. I haven't found any to use them yet. So it doesn't look like I have any M8 parts here. Come on, it's paper. You can put paper in there if you want. So, it appears you're going to have to go to buy some shims. Where's your nearest shim dealer at? <laughs> Mine's about a week away. You gotta buy a hundred at a time. How many you wanna buy? That one will almost fit. These are heat treated too, so they don't cut very easily. Black guy differ? Yeah, too small. Alright, uh, so we need something about 30 thou. We need to get it down to that, about that size. And you didn't have any way of doing it. What are you going to do? Why? It'll almost fit in there. It's perfect. The shim. So 
Okay, we need to get an idea about how much height we got here. Do we need 30 more or do we need 60 more? I don't think we need 30s on the intakes and 60 on the exhaust. Remember, we had to grind the valves a lot when we ground the seats. We ground everything quite a bit. Got nothing to go by. I'm not going with the taller piston. It's the, it's the same. I don't think we're anywhere. Here. I mean, if you look at this other piston, it doesn't have much scarring from any scarring from valve lag or valve damage. It was nailing like crazy. Only that one. That was probably after that valve was bent. Oh, it got bent all right. I'm just worried about the diameters or anything hitting on them. Where's the other one? The other one was clean. Where's it at? I didn't bring it. Why would you not bring the piston so I could see if any wear marks in it? Oh, I, I brought the... You brought me the offending one, not the other one, huh? It appears the other valve was not hitting. But I was just going to lightly kiss out the eyebrow. Let me see the piston. This is the new piston. Barely even have an eyelet on the damn thing. You're full of carbon. You need to clean them. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like you might be alright. We'll find out though. There you go. Okay, so we need some shims that are smaller than these. You don't have any? Do we pocket? do we need the shims? We need something. We need spring tension. It's the same ones. Okay, I gotta measure your valve heights. Now these have all been cut and there is no two surfaces the same on any of these valves. So that's you want dirty and dirty, right? I mixed up your dirty and your clean parts. Okay, all the black valves go on the uh, whatever head this is front here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get some kind of an installed height number here. Seven five five is a starting point. Seven four five is the next time we measure. Seven three eight keeps getting lower each time we measure it. <laughs> 742. Okay, around 740. Think about that. Seven forty. What are you doing over there? You breaking stuff? Looking for a Okay, that was seven forty, this one's seven twenty. 718, 727, but it moved, 730, 730. So the exhaust are 10,000 behind the intake, but they're a lot lighter, so realistically the same RPM. So we got to assemble up one of these to see what the install height is. I'm not even sure if I can get in to measure these things. Probably have the best uh, access to this one here. See, it's got a cutout right here. We might be able to measure mm -hmm. from. Okay, so this is a seal. This one we're gonna use. Yeah, it's, there should have been four good ones right there. Right. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick assembly here. If it works, we don't have to take it apart.
Okay, we want the spring to be right there so I can measure it. Yeah, see it's buried in a hole, I can't even measure to it. Hmm? Can't even measure it because it's in a hole. My keeper. <laughs> You're not helping. Put it there. Gee. Trying to help me, aren't you? <laughs> Slowing down the process here a little bit. See how that works? Put it down the table. finger on top of it. Okay. And how in the hell are we going to measure that for height? Okay, I need some light. Where my scale go? See my scale anywhere? Uh, right there. You have any access to measure anything? I don't know how you're supposed to measure install height. So you can't assemble it, measure it, doesn't work. Kill the light. I think we could be off slightly with that because I think we're far from having it. Okay, so we're going to go like this. There's no room to think. Huh? <laughs> All I can do is like I did, I just mocked up before with a. I'll try it without the spring so I get a better idea of where I'm at. Job. We didn't need that, did we? Let me see it. Let me do it. Alright, where's that light? Blinding me or not helping much. I'm gonna go 35, 535. Stand up straight. A little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna go 535. Kill a light. My flashlight at or this one. Oh. Okay, 1.535 minus, we had 85,000 on the measurement one that we mm -hmm. used before, 0 0.08, minus 0.085, this is 450, we're still pretty tall, we're supposed to be down at 415. Paper. Yeah. But they don't give us any shims. 
Obviously, I'm going to have to come up with some kind of way of measuring this better than this because it's a stupid way of measuring. Where's our, t where's our instruction at? Kill the light. I'm wasting electricity. So we have 80 pounds of pressure if you had it at 415, but we're at 450. We're 35 thou up from that. 40 thou up, basically. We got 465 max lift, it says. Not at that stall height, you don't. Oh, it's 465 at that number. Yeah, we're not, we're running 500 and 504, right? They're saying max lift is 465. Where did they come up with these numbers? That's stupid. Let me double check my numbers, make sure I'm not stupid. So we had point 0.860 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.504. 414. So if we're good at that number. I don't know how they come up with 465 because I got yeah, 505 and we're good at that number. So whatever. We're being conservative. And I've come up with uh, what number did I come up with? 450? 5. 550, I mean? Yeah. No, 450. 450. 450. On that one. So that means you can put a 30 thou shim in there, which is what these are. Boost up our spring rate a little bit. Because you're boosting the piss out of it. You need to have spring tension on the damn thing. So there's no good way of measuring this except by doing what I'm doing. Kind of stupid way of doing it, but it works. We don't know if any of these are correct. Well, the spring should pull up a little bit on it. We should gain clearance. Check this other head. Where's our intake at? It's already got a seal on it. Okay, where's our lower seat? Fifty one, eighty five, Light. Light. Hello. Oh. This one's right at five hundred. Slightly below that. Maybe four eighty five. I'm going to say 490. We had what, what was our seat color thickness? Uh, that's 34? 50. So that puts us down at about oh, 35. This that puts us down about 35. Which is only, see, 30 would be pushing it on our clearance if we put it on 30. We want to be up around 15. So this valve doesn't really need a shim. 
So I'm just going to say put together without shims. We're going to be a little light on pressure or we're going to be a little bit too close. It would run because I got 50,000 extra clearance. So if we pack it all the way, I could put a shim under everybody and it pack a little bit tighter. There's enough room. It would be, you know, well, instead of being 50 clearance from coil, we'll have probably 35, 40 on the tight one, which I think would be fine. But it's a matter of how many RPM you're going to spend this thing. I'm going to turn the RPMs down either way. Keep it at around 6, 6K. I think you get to 7. I just don't want to I'm imagine. If you think you're going 7, you're probably spinning above 7. So. I have a red limber. I can, so I can turn these. I can cut these down. I don't I'll put them in there. Put it together without the shim. It'll be, it'll be close, but we should be all right. Because I sunk the piss out of the valve. Remember, these valves have been all ground a lot. Everything's been ground a lot, so that takes away clearance. So I think we should put the shims in there. Because I know you. I already know how you're going to drive the damn thing or ride it. You're going to beat the tar out of it. You've already been proven. <laughs> but no, I don't. I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to turn the... Uh... And I believe in miracles happening, too. <laughs> but not from you. <laughs> Anything that could have possibly went wrong with this bike has gone wrong. Did I put that politely for you? <laughs> okay, which shim are we going to use? We're going to use the uh, big hole shim or the small hole shim. Usually 600, 650 is plenty. We just spring that. Springs way on the outside edge. I'm not sure how good I'm gonna make this. So. I think these are 15 to yeah. How hard are these? They cut pretty good. Okay, I'm going to cut down these ones. I like the smaller hole. So we're going to go cut these down. We'll be back.